This is Inside Athletics brought to you by the IAAF. I am your host, Atto Bolden. Our guest today is the Javelin Olympic champion from Rio 2016, Germany's Thomas Roller. Thomas, welcome to the program. Good Thank to have you. you on. Let's talk about your triumph this year in Rio. The Javelin can be a very finicky event. Tell us about qualification and then how things unfolded for you in the actual final. Yeah, uh, I came from uh, from some problems from the European Championships. I had a really, really, really bad injury, and it was just six weeks uh, past. And uh, knowing that, and knowing my body, I went to the qualifications, and uh, I made it in the third attempt, and I did a 83.01. Not bad. <laughs> it's a, just on point, and uh, it's good to have like trial attempts in a big stadium. I've never thrown there before, so it was really, really good for the final to, to test a little bit. I, I know it's a really risky game, but if you go there to win or to find out how the body goes and if everything's back at work, and uh, that's what I decided with my coach, and then uh, I was in the final, and the day I woke up, uh, the final day, I really had a really, really good feeling, and uh, I just went. When you say a good feeling, just your body felt good, or you just woke up feeling confident? I think both. I think if the body feels good, you can be confident. And I woke up confident and body feeling good. So it was kind of the right time. And I was really looking forward to the final and just uh, enjoying the javelin. Now, it seems like of late, certainly in the last two Olympic Games, the javelin Olympic champion is a very young guy. We had Kishore and Walcott from, from my home country, Trinidad and Tobago, winning as a junior four years ago. And now you, at a relatively young age, in an event where the Olympic champions, certainly in the past, seemed to be guys who had been there before and had so many years in the event. Why do you think that your event has maybe started to change in that direction now? Uh, maybe it's also about the way people approach the javelin. It's more with the javelin change yes. back in time. It went more technically precise and you have to take more risks and it's more speed and everything in the, in the game. But we've been also talking about times with uh, Jelesny and stuff and they won the Olympics in older ages. And, right. uh, we don't know what's, what the future is going to be. Um, I don't want somebody young now to come and, uh, and beat me. I bet soon. you don't. <laughs> so, um, but it's really, really developing. We see it in Germany. We have a really, really strong, but also really young team, and it's the same all over the world. Like Sean just said, and uh, really young throwers. That uh, I think we've been all like inspired by the older throwers, but we were still able to to compete against them and learn and take the experience uh, for our advantage. Now, you mentioned Jan Zalesny as um, you know, a former champion, and I know somebody that you looked up to um, early in your career, even though you're still early in your career. Um, when I think of the javelin, I don't automatically think Germany. Discus, yes, but not necessarily javelin. What do you think your win is going to do now for your country and the young kids who maybe will look at this event now as, hey, Javelin Olympic champion might be in my future. Yeah, it's something I really, really like. And uh, people start understanding the javelin. We had pretty good javelin throwers. So we had the guy throwing the 104 meters with the old standard javelin. Right. And that is a long, long time ago. And people did not really realize it anymore. And, uh, but now, coming from 2014, winning the, the Diamond League, and. Uh, me and my team from Jena, we started explaining people, showing people javelin. Uh, we, we set up competitions where people can come close and really understand the forces and uh, the performance people uh, put on the track. And um, in my club, in my town, I really feel like uh, all the kids, when they do like running drills over some kind of bars, they, right. they just grab the bar and show something javelin. <laughs> and it's so fun to see. And yeah. I think the same happens all over in Germany because we have quite some local heroes now with the big and good javelin team. So uh, it's a whole German thing developing there. I competed in the 93 World Championships in Stuttgart and I was there for the 2009 World Championships in Berlin. I thought that the Berlin World Championships were the best I'd ever been to. I know how 
passionate German fans are. Um, what has been the response uh, to your win back home? Has it elevated you now where you are an instant household name? What, is, what has being Olympic champion done for you back home? Oh, well, it's a really, really warm welcome. When I came home to my hometown, the whole yes. marketplace was full of people, a really crowded place. The whole uh, sports school, the high school was right. there. Many, many young kids, which I really love to see. And yeah. many people that I recognized uh, followed my journey all the way through when I started being a young athlete. And uh, all in all, in Germany, track and field is just one piece of sports. So we, we still... Is it, we are still a football nation. Of course. <laughs> team games and everything, team yeah. sports. And, uh, but it's, I wouldn't say that the track and field loses, but wins like mine really show people that track and field is something to look up to and uh, that young kids should be inspired to, to also test like single event sports like track and field. And it's, uh, it's like a challenge being the Olympic champion in a sport that is not that big in Germany. Tell me about your growing up, though, and how you got into the javelin. Um, what were the sports that you played before you got into track and field, if any? So maybe, maybe you've always been in the track and field. And, uh, and, and tell me a little bit about how you ended up specifically in the javelin. Hmm. I've always been in the track and field. I started in the second grade, which is eight, uh, okay. with eight years yeah. of age in Germany, usually. And uh, I just started with running, playing. It was always fun, and we had it really nice group so it was fun for me to to do the track and field and this is why i never tested something else i think right. because it was just fun from the beginning so no ever nobody ever tried to get you to play soccer no really no wow. no at your height goalie forward no i know wow. i know i know um it was a lucky like uh pick from one of my first coaches was just living next to our house where i grew up and she, I think she saw somebody, everyone she saw moving around kids, she, she grabbed them and put them in the track and field and just told them, just try it. And it was really open-minded and everything. So I tried it and it was fun and I stayed there and it developed smoothly and I wasn't a really good young athlete. I was always that fourth place guy, okay. uh, not growing up uh, too fast. I was uh, growing a little uh, slower than the other guys and then, anyway, I ended up in the sports uh, special school, we call it in Germany, it's like mm -hmm. sports high school. Yes. And we had a really, really good time there, a uh, group of boys and girls training everything in track and field, and then I specialized to the triple jump. Huh. You know, people could ask, why do you specialize to triple jump when throwing is your passion? Right. Because the throwing always followed me. When I grew up uh, earlier, when I went to, to vacations with, uh, with my father and mother in uh, with the family, I always, I was always throwing something. I was, when we went to the shore and I found stones, everything was good. It was a good vacation for me. <laughs> as long as you have something to throw. I was always up to, to having competitions with dad and everything. And uh, so everything I found, I just throw somewhere. So it was that passion always following my way, even when I was a triple jumper. And, uh, I developed pretty okay in the triple jump. I was. I made it to, to German championships in the under 18, but then there were structural changes in the place I trained and everything. So there was the time somebody asked me, what is really your, your event you like the most in track and field? And I said, it's the throwing, to be honest. So I changed to the throwing squad and that was the best thing I could have done ever. And uh, yeah, that's where I am now. <laughs> that's where yeah. I'm standing now. Yes, it is. So you're the Olympic champion, so I think you're eminently qualified to answer this question. Um, there are young kids out there, and their parents look at them, and maybe they're throwing stuff. What are the, the qualities that you, need, you would look for in a young boy or girl that would indicate an ability to be good in the future in the javelin? That's that the thing that you answer with, yes, he can throw. And you see that also in, in kids' ages. If someone just, whatever, makes a paper roll and just throws it away, you see in the technique if it's coordinated or if it's not. And uh, also throwing a stone, throwing a ball, whatever it is, if it's a baseball or whatever, mm -hmm. you will see if that one is capable of throwing or not. And uh, you need to have that. And then don't specialize too early. This is one thing that I really, really 
think is really important because we see countries where people specialize really early in the javelin and they do have injury problems pretty early. Right. And I specialize really late and I'm, yes, I'm lucky with the injuries, but I think specializing late in the throws and like risky events like the javelin is really good for the body to learn and then you can perform. So now you're the Olympic champion, you have that target on your back. Have you gone back to training this year feeling like, ooh, this is a little different because now I'm going to have this big target on my back for the world championships next year. Um, how are you coping with that? I'm always really motivated going back to training. The first week was hard as always is. Yeah. Uh, we all know that. And, uh, but I know people are chasing me. I'm the one chased every competition I go people want to beat me and uh, but it's still it's what we said it's the javelin it's an open race every time I know that and uh, I'm looking forward to even further throws for me and then we see what happens in the competitions. But Tomas I am thrilled to have had you on the show uh, we enjoyed your exploits congratulations on your Olympic title and best of luck at the world championships next year. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks. you.